Good morning. So today we're going to go through another letter of the alphabet. Uh, we're going to do U is for uncertainty. Um, a couple reasons for that. One, you've had a stroke and there's a lot of things that are definitively uncertain. Which can lead to, you know, difficulties. So, it's not like you planned your stroke, you know, like I'm going to pencil that in for, you know, whatever day, whatever time. Yeah, it just kind of happened. Fun fact. Um, you don't really know how devastating that stroke is going to be until you, you're out of the hospital um, and out of the intensive care stroke unit, rehab monitoring, you know, cardi sorry, cardiac monitoring and all that funness. You're now actually discharged from the hospital, and you've either been discharged to a rehab recovery facility or discharged to home, uh, or nursing home if you're not able to go home. Um, so now you're left with a lot of uncertainties, and that can be quite disheartening and quite disheveling, right? Because will you be able to communicate effectively again? Uh, will you be able to feed yourself again, dress yourself, walk, you know, go back to work, uh, go back to the work that you left when you had the stroke? Um, you know, will this impact? There are so many ways in which your stroke can be very disorganizing on your life, right? You had a plan, you know, I had a plan for this year and a plan for next year. Unfortunately, that is completely blown out the window right now um, there's not much I can do about that and with your stroke or someone around you that's had a stroke they're going to have the exact same thing where they had plans like I had planned to go to Las Vegas in January for the shot show I'm not insurable to travel and more than likely will not be insurable to travel uh, by January um, also, uh, you know, it may not be a financial reality come January. Right? So that is what it is. Um, I had planned to be at work <laughs> right now. Um, I had not planned to have a summer off, <clears throat> you know. So there's a lot of things about your stroke that will be quite the monkey wrench, right? will get thrown into the work. So unless you're British, the spanner. Um, so you're dealing with situations and circumstances whereby it's not easy, right? Uh, and even your day in, day out can be uncertain, right? What might start out as a great day could turn out to be a craptastic day. You know, you get uh, fatigued, you get headaches, um, you have sensory sensitivities like I covered in a video yesterday. Um, the only thing that is really certain in your stroke world is appointments, and there'll be a lot of them. <clears throat> be it you're in a rehab recovery facility where they come to you because you're already in the hospital, or you're like me, you're at home and you're, you know, spending two to three, day, two to three days a week. Um, a portion of each day at an appointment of some type, be it speech and language, be it uh, physio, be it uh, occupational, be it actual counseling, be it, you know, going to the doctor, right? Uh, you're going to get to know your pharmacist a lot better because you're going to see them regularly because you're going to be on the meds. So there's a lot of things that with a stroke are very uncertain. Um, now, don't let that get you down because with all this uncertainty, you're going to get anxious, right? And that will lead to post-stroke anxiety. And, or due to all the uncertainty, you may start to get very sad, which can turn into depression, which will become post-stroke depression. So the uncertainty can feed into some of that, right? And that is uh, something you need to be mindful uh, and cognizant of, that because you will be kind of left in limbo, right? you, there will be periods of, you are very uncertain as to what is going on in your world uh, or even how you're going to be able to interact with your world. Um, 
you will make gains one day which may not be repeatable the next. Uh, you know, you may find that one day you're able to do a certain activity, um, two days later you're unable to do that activity, right? Um, there's not much you can really do uh, about that. That it, it just it is what it is, right? Um, and because of the uncertainty, you're going to find there are periods of time where you're hesitant to do things. And I don't mean like you're afraid. Um, and if, if you are living in, in, a, in a world of fear more than uncertainty, yeah, definitely you need to go get help with that. Because I know there are some people that after their stroke, um, they're fearful that there's another one coming and another one coming immediately. Right. Um, they're afraid of, you know, various circumstances or situations that may present, which may be a stroke. Um, and that is, it's a thing. It's, it's probably post-stroke anxiety at its worst, but there are people that do have a sense of foreboding, um, that there's another stroke coming right around the corner. But, um, you shouldn't be living in fear. And yeah, there are going to be days where you're just not certain what you're able to do. Uh, or how you're able to do it, and that gets a bit disheartening, right? Um, I've had days in physio where one day I'm able to do a certain activity, uh, and then two days later, I can't do the exact same thing, the exact same way, get the exact same numbers, right? Um, and that is very, very disheartening, right? Um, and there's really not much you can do about that. Right? It, it, it's a thing. Now, <clears throat> if you get to the point whereby your uncertainty is spiraling into anxiety uh, or spiraling, spiraling into depression, you immediate, immediately, uh, if you already haven't seen my videos on post-stroke depression and post-stroke anxiety, you need to immediately uh, seek out professional help. Um, you need to immediately find someone that you trust and, and care about um, and that you think can help you and get them to help you get the help you need. Uh, the, the only advice I have is try to make the most of the uncertainty um, and focus on what you can do. I know that's not easy, right? Trust me, I know that's not easy. Another part of the uncertainty uh, is how will people around you that you normally had regular interaction with react? Um, there are people that are around you that may not know, they are uncertain, right? Um, about how to approach you. Like, uh, I've recently had a, a text conversation with a friend that, you know, they want to come around and visit, but they're not sure what my brain can handle. Like, well, just come on over, right? Like, one-on-one -on -one conversation, I'm fine. Uh, I get uncertain when I get into a group situation where there's lots of people around me. I don't know how that conversation is going to go. Um, that being said, I, I can't control that, right? Um, fun facts. But for the people that, have, that are friends or family of, of a stroke person, one of the stroke folk, uh, you're going to have some uncertainty as well because for the first little bit, you're on an emotional roller coaster, and I completely appreciate that because I've been there myself via my grandmother, um, and I understand it's an emotional roller coaster. You don't know uh, what is going to happen, and because strokes are messy, and you don't know what you don't know, um, you know, you're you're wondering how you're able to constructively and creatively contribute with that person. That being said, um, fun fact, even the stroke assaulter themselves does not know what they're going through. And that's not me referring to myself in the third person because I fucking hate that. People do that, it just creeps me out. Um, so, um, yeah. Just meaning your stroke folk in general. Now then, when it comes to the uncertainty, Ultimately, it doesn't hurt to ask, right? Um, my friend I was having a, a text conversation with, 
I know them from work. And they're like, hey, I want to come visit, but I'm not sure if your brain can handle it. I'm like, I can. Yeah, what do you want to do? And yeah, come on over. The, the worst thing you can do is not ask. And and it is, I think it's because there is that level of uncertainty of the people around the person that had the stroke. Um, you're going to find out uh, once you had your stroke, people that you used to have regular communication with, um, it kind of drops away, right? Um, you know, like people I used to have conversations with daily um, at work and I would, you know, text with them after work, um, those conversations have almost stopped, right? Uh, for whatever reason, you know, uh, I found that I typically am the one to initiate the conversations. Not sure why. Um, it is what it is. Unfortunately, part of the uncertainty with a stroke uh, happens to be people don't know how to deal with the fact that you had a stroke, so they kind of just distance, right? And that, that's a thing, right? Unfortunately, that's a thing. So now, people that you used to regularly deal with, um, they are uncertain. What's it going to hurt to visit or have a conversation with, you know, or just text? But people, I think they're afraid. Um, that they're going to catch a stroke? I don't know. Anyways, so when it comes to the level of uncertainty that you will individually have, I'm going to assume, and I hate to assume because assumption is the mother of all fuck-up, um, I'm going to assume that the level of uncertainty you have is going to be directly related to the level of disruption the stroke has provided to you in your life, you know, um, for example, are you going to be in the hospital for the next six weeks and then a rehab facility for three or four after that? Um, or are you someone like me? I was in the hospital three days and then they let me go home. Uh, and that's because literally there's not much they could do for me. Um, so exactly where in those problems will lie for you and how uncertain you will feel as an individual, it really depends on kind of where your stroke has left you. Now, the last piece to uncertainty are the doctors. Um, your doctor can give you benchmarks. Benchmarks, right? That's about it. They're not able to really give you more than that. Uh, because we understand a lot about the brain, but we don't understand everything about it. Um, best example would be Phineas Gage, uh, back when they were building the railroads uh, in the 1800s in America. You know, he was expected not to live. He did. He wasn't expected to live beyond the end of the week. He did. You know, uh, and he would be North America's first brain injury patient of note uh, in a quote-unquote modern medical time. So when it comes to things like what the doctors can tell you about everything is uncertainty because they're not going to have every single answer due to the stroke. Um, mainly because they're working off statistical models and mainly because we don't even today understand exactly how the brain works or doesn't work. Um, and that, that's a thing. And unfortunately with some of their uncertainty, because they're not going to be able to give you direct answers at times. Uh, they'll give you more than likely. Yeah. You know, they'll give you percentages and that's going to help you a little bit, but also feed your sense of uncertainty because well, even the doctors don't know. And that, unfortunately, as well, is a thing, right? Like, there's there's not much you can do when even the experts are uncertain. All I can say for certain is pick a goal, right? Pick a goal, right? Uh, make sure that it's a smart goal. And we'll do, I'll do a video on goal setting, right? Uh, and then at that point, work towards the goal and you will either see no progress at all in which case you know the goal might not be the best goal for you or 
you will see in incremental progress, right? And then you can then develop your sense of certain certainties over your goals versus your progress. And then you'll know how you're able to do things, right? And with the stroke, the initial benchmark is six weeks, six months, then a year. However, that's a benchmark. Uh, you can still make recovery goals work two, three years after your stroke. So don't be concerned that, you know, where you end up at the one year mark is where you end up, right? Anyways, I'm going to work on the next set of videos. I'm working on a series of videos for uh, each type of stroke in the brain. Um, I'm going to try to work in graphics, see how that goes. If you happen to either yourself or someone around you has recently gone through a stroke, please like, share, subscribe, leave comments down below. Um, the comments dropped away, don't know why. Uh, and if you, you know, enjoy what you're watching, please subscribe. If you don't, go away. You're 15 minutes and 40 seconds into a video. And if you happen to either notice in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.